So we are here today to talk about the most important rule for managing your project team's velocity. Just as a boat measures its rate of progress in knots, an agile project team measures its rate of progress with a metric known as project team velocity. So how do we express this project team velocity metric? How is it measured and calculated? I know the answer to that question. A project team's velocity is expressed as the number of story points or ideal days completed per iteration. Yes, that's correct. So, for example, an agile project team that completed 12 stories worth a total of 30 story points within their last iteration. We would then say that this project team's velocity is 30 or 30 points per iteration. Right. Assuming that the scope of the project in your example has not changed. The project team has that much less work to complete. Because velocity is the primary measure of the team's progress, it is important to establish some ground rules for how it is calculated. The most important rule is that the team should count story points towards velocity only for user stories or features that are complete at the end of the iteration. Complete doesn't mean something like the coding is done but it hasn't been tested or it's coded but needs to be integrated. Complete means code that is well written, well factored, checked in and clean, complies with coding standards, and passes all tests. To know how much progress is being made, we count only the points for work that is complete. Opening the door to counting partially finished work, perhaps getting partial credit, makes it impossible to know exactly where we are. So what are the problems with counting partially finished work against the Agile project team burndown charts I'm always being shown by project, program and product managers? There are three main problems with counting unfinished work. First, is extremely hard to measure unfinished or incomplete work. For instance, which is further along, a user story that is programmed but has had no tests run against it or a user story that has been partially programmed and partially tested. How far along is a programmer who has designed a solution for a user story but hasn't started coding it? Okay now I think I am beginning to understand. As people, we're good at knowing when something hasn't been started, and we are really good at knowing when it's done. Exactly so. As managers and as a project team, we should assess work to be in one of those two states and leave it at that. A second major problem with counting partially finished work is that incomplete user stories break down the trust between the developer team and the customer team on the project. If the story cannot be completed as planned during an iteration, the developers and the customer team need to collaboratively resolve the issue as soon as it's discovered. Usually. This means the user story and question should be moved out of the iteration or split into multiple user stories and parts of the story are moved out of the iteration. The product owner and customer team can make these decisions in real time during the iteration and may choose to prioritize based on the new knowledge about the cost of the story. Alternatively, the customer or project team may decide to alter the acceptance criteria for the story accepting it under the lesson criteria they have set. The project team should not go so far as to accept a bug written or untested version of the user story, but they may decide to reduce performance requirements or handling of special cases and so forth. The third and perhaps most important problem with unfinished work is that it leads to build up of work in process in the development queue. The more work in process the project team allows to build up, the longer it will take new features to be transformed from raw ideas into functioning software. Over time, this will decrease the throughput of the entire project team. Similarly, with large amounts of work in progress, it takes longer for the project team to get feedback on what they're developing. This means that vital adaptive learning is also delayed. It sounds to me that if your project team has unfinished stories at the end of an agile iteration, they're working with features or user stories that are too large. Exactly. Small user stories allow a steady flow through the development process. So if user stories are left unfinished, they will need to be split into smaller stories. Yes, but ideally, this should happen prior to the start of the iteration. However, if during an iteration already underway, the user story is found to be larger than expected, this needs to be brought to the attention of the product owner. The product owner, in collaboration with the team, will find a way to split the story or reduce its scope so a portion can ideally still be completed within the iteration with the remainder of the user story moved to a future iteration. So how should an agile project team count a partially finished user story when determining project team velocity? 
How the project team counts such a user story is less important than having them determine why it happened and how they can prevent it from happening again. It may have happened because the user story in question was underestimated to begin with. If so, the project team should think about what type of work was underestimated or forgotten and try to remember to take care when estimating that type of work in the future. Or the user story may have been unfinished because too many user stories were pulled into the current iteration. Okay, so I now understand the vital importance of the most important rule for project team velocity. An agile project team should never count partially finished or unfinished work against their project team's velocity. And also keep in mind that if too many user stories were planned for the iteration, care should be taken in the future to plan iterations more carefully. Well thank you both for that explanation. Where can our viewers go to get more information about managing agile project teams? One of the best places to go for information on managing agile projects is HubTechInsider.com. Paul Siebert, Boston's HubTech Insider, has written many articles and has posted more training videos like this one on HubTechInsider.com, so check it out and get hip. HubTechInsider.com, got it.